Please stand as we welcome our pastor, Father Jerry Hurley. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, (coughs) may the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Thank you. Good morning. We're dwindling in numbers, huh? Man, getting right down to it. The the last of the the, um, heroes. So... uh, As we begin our celebration, we ask the Lord to be kind and merciful to us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God of mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us, and make those hastening toward your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Job. One day, when the angels of God came to present themselves before the Lord, Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, Whence do you come? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From roaming the earth and patrolling it. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you noticed my servant Job? And there is no one on earth like him, blameless and upright, fearing God and avoiding evil? But Satan answered the Lord and said, Is it nothing for Job? Is it nothing that Job is God-fearing? Have you not surrounded him and his family and all that he has with your protection? Have you blessed the work of his hands and his livestock and spread over the land? But now you put forth your hand and touch anything he has, and surely he will blaspheme you in, in your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his his person. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And one day, while his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in the house of their eldest brother, a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses grazing beside them, and the Sabaeans carrying them off in a raid. They put the herdsmen to the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was speaking, another came and said, Lightning has fallen from heaven and struck the sheep and the shepherds and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, another messenger came and said, The Chaldeans formed three columns, seized the camels, carried them off, and put those tending to them to the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was yet speaking, another came and said, 
your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in the house of their eldest brother, when suddenly a great wind came across the desert and smote the four corners of the house. <clears throat> it fell upon the young people and they are dead, and I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job began to tear his cloak and cut off his hair. He cast himself prostrate on the ground and said, Naked I came forth from my mother's womb, and naked I shall go back again. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin, nor did he say anything disrespectful of God. This is the word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, incline your ear to me and hear my word. Incline your ear to me and hear my word. Hear, O Lord, a just suit. Attend to my outcry. Hearken to my prayer from lips without deceit. Incline your ear to me and hear my word. From you let my judgment come. Your eyes behold what is right. Though you test my heart, searching it in the night. And though you try me with fire, you shall find no malice in me. Incline your ear to me and hear my word. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me, hear my word. Show your wondrous mercies, O Savior of those who flee from their foes to refuge at your right hand. Incline your ear to me and hear my word. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. An argument arose among the disciples about which of them was the greatest. Jesus realized the intention of their hearts and took a child and placed it by his side, and said to them, Whoever receives this child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. For the one who is least among all of you is the one who is greatest. Then John said in reply, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow our company. And Jesus said to him, Do not prevent him, for whoever is not against you is for you. The Gospel of the Lord. We take a, a quick meander into uh, the book of Job. We'll just be in it for a week. Um, and what an interesting story. One of the great pieces of world literature uh, authorship pretty well unknown, uh, but it's born out of a, a prosaic and a poetic uh, experience um, of an old folk tale, probably from the uh, wisdom of Israel, maybe coming from the Egyptian uh, experience. And it's a story we see here in the beginning of um, uh, Satan and God having a discussion about his great servant Job, who is a very righteous man, and the devil intimating, um, well, if he began to experience tragic circumstances, then he might not be so great a servant. It's a, an issue indeed for all of us. How do we deal with adversity? How do we manage adversity in terms of our relationship with God? And it certainly is an appropriate question in these days with all of the adversity in our world, with the, the great adversity of the coronavirus, the uh, issues um, of racism, the issues, the hurricanes, the fires, the uh, worries about the global economy and the experiences of people 
people um, being denied and people being out of work and issues of life, uh, they are certainly to the fore. And the big question, how do we manage them all and navigate effectively our relationship with him throughout this? And so uh, we see the events that begin to unfold in Job's life and he remains steadfast and we hear the peace probably one of the better known pieces from the book of Job uh, at the end of that despite all of these hardships that visit him his family the destruction the property um, he uh, acknowledges naked I came from my mother's womb and naked shall I return the Lord gave and the Lord taketh away blessed be the name of the Lord um, from whence does one receive that kind of faith? It's going to be a real growing experience, knowing and understanding that all is from Him. Uh, and when one begins to understand that all is pure gift from Him, then maybe they don't become so attached. But we have the problem of becoming attached, and we see that attachment in the gospel uh, the little squabble that breaks out, an argument arose among the disciples as to which of them was the greatest. Well, uh, it still goes on every day in the world, you know. It's the constant struggle that we all feel depleted. We all uh, are so keenly aware of what's missing, what's lacking. Imagine if we were to approach it from the other perspective, uh, what abundance there is, how much good there is, how much of the greatness of the Lord is there and is available to us. Um, and Jesus tries to redirect the disciples, saying, hey, I'm with you. And he takes a little child, stands the child beside him and says, you know, having this attitude, the dependence of a child, the dependence on your heavenly Father, Back to a great theme again of Jesus, you know. Trust your Heavenly Father, you know, despite what obstacles or hardships uh, are visiting. Continue to see the faithfulness of God and allow Him to bring you to faithfulness as well. It's very easy said. It's very easy up here. It's very challenging here. And we know that in these days, but it's certainly very hopeful experience, very hopeful reading. And then we see a further little extension of it in John and the Gospel. John says, oh, yeah, just a little, by the way, we saw somebody casting out demons in your name. And, man, we put the kibosh on that because he wasn't of our team. Well, it goes on every day between denominations and Faith experience, well, no, that's not the way, and that's not, no, that's not Catholic, that's not, you know, uh, Baptist, or that is Baptist, or that is on and on. It's kind of endless, you know. The question is, hey, is this of him? That is the message that we ought to be seeking. Is this of him? And if it is not, you know, what is it? But what is he teaching me most of all through these experiences that come up? But just like the apostles, we can become very defensive. Well, no, that's not our Jesus, or that's not the way I perceive Jesus. How do I broaden my perspective of who this is? Who do you say that I am? Father, we ask you to hear our prayers and petitions which we bring to you this morning. We ask you to grant them that we may continue growing in your way. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that the Holy Spirit may bind us with the same love, uniting us in heart so that we may carry out God's will in the world today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our leaders, that they may have the courage to do what is right and just, even when it's not easy or popular. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For missionaries who spread the good news through word and action, that they may be kept safe from harm. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people who have experienced any type of illness, hardship, stress, loss of income, or loss of a loved one, 
due to the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may humbly regard others as more important than ourselves, looking out for their interest and becoming the face of, face of Christ for our neighbor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our faithful departed brothers and sisters who have died in the hope of rising again, especially Jeff Baker, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all who are sick and suffering from any kind of ailment or anguish of mind or body, for Grace Long, Alison Hogarth, Jennifer Freeland, Jordan Parker, Cheryl Garner, and Diane Enos, all who need your healing and saving power, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, all of these, our prayers we bring to you. We ask that you accept them and grant them, for we offer them with faith in Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread. We offer you the work of human hands and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice of ours may be acceptable to God, who is our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. And so we join the angels and saints in proclaiming your glory as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit Graciously make holy these gifts which we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body and one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the apostles, the martyrs, St. Paul, and all of your saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unsaving help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all of the bishops and the clergy and the entire people your Son has gained for you. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, grant to, your, grant to yourself all your children scattered, gather to yourself all of your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God, O Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now we pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always freed from sin and safe from all distress. As we await in blessed hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Thank you. And let us be aware of his peace and acknowledge it with one another.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God continue to bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended, and we go now in peace to love and to serve God and each other. Thanks be to God. If you have not received a St. Paul A bulletin in the last several weeks, please go to the website and register your email address. Next weekend, October 3rd and 4th, we will have a second collection for the Holy Lands. Please drop your gift in the collection basket or mail to the St. Paul office. Thank you. Okay.
Thank you all for joining us. Like I said, we're certainly getting down in numbers. We have to look at this and see if this is the best time and best use. We will certainly reflect on that, but thank you very much. And we don't need a great deal of instruction for exiting, huh? Okay.